Greetings Gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, we look cold, and today I'm going to make a pie because I love pies, but this pie will be a bit different because I'm going to use a pie making machine to mould it and cook it in. Mmm. So I'm doing this because I had a comment from Nigel Southworth recently on my Holland's Pie video and review, and um, he, he asked me if I've ever used one of these pie making machines and to be honest I barely heard of them I think I must have come well I, I don't think I have come across them anyway I went to, to that river themed shopping emporium online and uh, I bought one so it's not sponsored this is 22 pounds worth of my own money so I'll be brutally honest with it as I always am actually of course if you enjoy this video give it a like share subscribe etc and let's get that machine reviewed unboxed and cooking so i'm going to make minced beef and cheese pies because i love them i'm going to make the minced beef filling first so i've got half a kilo of minced beef that's about 10 percent fat i've got half a liter of beef stock i've got a small handful of flat leaf parsley a medium onion salt and pepper to taste and we'll also need a slurry made of equal parts cold water and corn flour and that's to thicken the gravy a bit later on so first thing to do chop that onion well you know top and tail it cut it in half rip the peel off and whack it with the magic knife and while we're in choppy mode, just uh, chop the parsley. I keep meaning to get one of those half moon mezzaluna herb chopper things. I used to have one. It was rubbish actually, but maybe I could get a better one these days. You never know. There we go. Now over to the stove and do that cooking thing. So heat some oil in a suitable vessel. I'm using a cast iron casserole thing and then gently cook the chopped onion for about five minutes till it's softened but not browned. Actually you can brown it if you want. Then add the meat and, and squeeze that about, get it browned all over. Then add the stock and the parsley and a bay leaf if you want. Bring that to the boil and let it simmer for about 15 minutes. Then give it a taste and season it with salt and pepper if you wish. And mix up a couple of teaspoons of corn flour with a couple of teaspoons of cold water. And pour that into the pan, stir it and after a few minutes it should thicken up and you'll get a nice thick gravy. So then turn down the heat, put the lid on and just let it simmer for about another 15 to 30 minutes or as long as you want so that it develops a nice deep flavour and when it's nice and rich take it off the heat set it aside until you need it right now you can't make a real pie without pastry i'm not talking about things with mashed potato tops because i don't think that'll work in this machine you can use ready-made pastry obviously so i've got some puff pastry which i will use for the tops but for the bottoms i'm going to make hot water pastry and despite what you may have heard, hot water pastry is the easiest pastry in the world to make. So you need 200 grams of plain all-purpose flour, 100 grams of lard cut into bits, and 100 ml of hot water, and a pinch of salt. So we'll just mix the salt in with the flour. And then we need to melt the lard into the water on the stove. So the fat is all melted into the water and I'll just add about half of it to the flour and then stir in the rest of it. And when you've got a nice smooth paste, wrap it in plastic film and stick it in the fridge until you need it. All right, let's have a look at our double pie maker. Delicious pies in minutes, oh yeah. So yeah, as I said, 
bought it on Amazon. I'll put a link below if you want to get one. And if you do use that link, I'll get a penny and you won't pay any more. So, instructions, always a good idea. Polystyrene, never a good idea. Plastic bag, likewise. Three pin plug and a double sided cutter. So the smaller one is for the lids, the bigger one is for the bottoms. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, can I get it open? Oh yeah, a little latchy thing. Um, I have to say it's a, it's somewhat plasticky, <laughs> um, but these, these plates are metal. Oh, and it's quite small actually. The blurb said nine centimeter diameter, which they are on the outside. Um, uh, but they're quite titchy inside. So that'd be interesting. These would be pies for Weight Watchers. Okay, here's the uh, power cable. Not very long. I mean, it's fine if you've got it on a worktop with a wall with a socket nearby. But obviously, in this situation, I haven't, so I'll have to use an extension cable. Hey ho. Now, the instructions advise you, well, they tell you to preheat the machine and roll out your pastry and cut the the circles and then assemble the pie in the machine when it's hot which uh, doesn't sound like a, which doesn't sound to me like a sensible way to do it so I'm going to do it while the machine is cold and then we'll preheat it and then put them in all in one go so it's not happening gradually I know what I mean also I'm a bit worried because this is the same kind of principle as toasted sandwich makers that were wildly popular when I was a student and the only thing wrong with those was your sandwiches weren't toasted they were kind of they were pretty much fried and I think we might have a similar effect with our pastry but we'll see right I'll uh, roll out some pastry for bases so this is the uh, hot water pastry that I made flour on your worktop not that much Rock and roll. Okay. Cut the circle. I've seen comments on this uh, machine where people have said that the, the bottom size is, is too big. But I think um, yeah, this looks absolutely fine. I'll get some of this ready rolled puff pastry and cut some lids. Pile as much of that in as you can and they do say if you can try and make the top domed so that um, the, the top lid will be in, in contact with the hot plate it will work better. And don't forget your cheese. Try, try not to have any cheese on the pastry rim. Lids on and close it. Put your lids on and close it. Right. We do have a little bit of excess pastry, but you can just Trim that off if you want. And then I'll take those out and put them in the fridge until we're ready for them. There we go. They're uh, pretty cute looking. So I'll assemble a few more. Okay, time to cut the pies. The instruction leaflet says glaze them with milk, which I'll, I'll do one um, because in, in the product reviews, some people have tried them un, unglazed or, you know, without, without milk and like those better. What I won't do at this point is uh, try glazing it with egg, which is what I would normally do, but I think it would clag it up too much. I could be wrong. Anyway, you need to plug it in. There's no on-off switch. 
Okay, so we've got two lights. There's That's the power light, the red one, and this is the ready light. So when that goes off, that means it's reached the optimal temperature to start cooking the pies. So that'll take a couple of minutes and then we'll chuck them in. Okay, the green light has gone out, so... It's nice and warm. I wouldn't fancy trying to construct a pie in that, actually. So we'll just pop them in. It doesn't say put any oil or anything in because it's uh, non-stick. Close it and then let it cook for eight to ten minutes. I don't know if I should be worried about all of this vapour coming out, but um, I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, we'll see. The pies have had... Oh, that's hot. Don't touch that. The pies have had nine minutes, so let's have a look. Wow. Ooh. They look pretty good. Well, the, the bottom pastry has uh, grown somewhat, and especially on this one. And do you know what? I can't remember which one had the glaze, the milk glaze. They, they both look the same, don't they? This one's a bit darker, but hmm. Anyway, impressive. That needs a good clean before you use it again. Right, let's uh, cut one open. Oh yeah, taste test. All right, let's have a go. Mmm. Pastry's dry and crispy, crunchy. It's marvellous, actually. <laughs> if you know anything about me and my channel, you'll know that I'm pretty much obsessed by pies and pastry. And I have to say, I am seriously impressed by this little gadget. It's... I really, really wasn't expecting to get a good result. I was expecting a greasy thing like a you know, an old toasted sandwich. But this is this is just marvellous. It's really, really, really good. They are a bit on the small side, but there's a solution to that. Have two if you're hungry. So yeah, Quest Double Pie Maker, well worth $22.99. So uh, yeah, link below, don't forget. Thanks for watching and see you next time.